Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today I want to show you how to quickly model um, this cute little boat and you know animate it a little bit so it wiggles in the sea waves and stuff like that. And I really hope you will enjoy this one. And if you do, please leave that like, it will really help my channel to grow. And if you are new to the channel and you'd like to see content like this in the future, please hit that subscribe and additionally bell button if you want to get notified when I release something new. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender, and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. Let's jump right into empty blender file and first thing I want to just select everything, press X and delete and we'll start by adding a plane. So let's press shift A and let's add a plane. Now I will press 7 on an unpad for a top view, tap into the edit mode, select these two vertices, press X and delete. So we have only these two left and now in the modifiers tab let's add a mirror modifier and let's extrude some more vertices. So let's select this one here and press E and extrude it like that. And now here we can press G and move it slightly back and now press E multiple times to extrude a shape like that. You can see here it's crossing so we can just leave it here and enable clipping and now if you press G it will just snap in the middle. So now basically this is up to you how you want to shape your boat. You can use scaling on these vertices so you can press S then Y you know to adjust this and I'm looking for something like this here. Now let's press E once more here in the back and press X to lock it on the X axis and close the shape. Now I'll press A to select all and F to fill to create a new face there. Now let's zoom in a little bit. I will go for edge select by pressing 2 and let's select this edge right here and by holding control I will add to the selection. Press E then Z to extrude this up just like that and now I'll press G then X to move it to the side slightly and now S then Y to scale it on Y axis and G then Y to shift it towards the front a little bit. So this is okay now let's go for a face select by pressing 3 select this face right there and we'll press I to create an inset but additionally you can press B um, to enable boundary mode so you can see how it's insetting towards the middle there and I'm looking for something like this and now press G then Z and move it down. So this will be our basic boat shape and I want to keep this shape for later. So let's tab out, press Shift D, right click to release and we can press M to move it into a new collection. Let's click new collection and let's call this backup. And I want to disable that collection here so we don't mess anything up. And now let's select the plane here and we can rename that to a boat. And now let's continue with our block out. So I'll press Shift A and add single vert. If you don't have this option here, go ahead in the Edit Preferences add-ons and enable Extra Objects add-on. And then you will see all these options here, including the single vert, which we're gonna add now. And now let's look from the side by pressing 3 on an unpad. And after adding that single vert, you can see we're already in the Edit mode, but we need to make sure we are in the Vertex Select. And let's press E, then Z and Extrude one vertex up like this and now I'll press shift D then Z to duplicate that vertex and move it down and now E then Y to extrude that vertex to the side. Now I will tab out and right click convert to curve and now in the object data properties let's look for geometry section and let's increase the depth here. And now we can tap into this curve, select this top control point and by pressing Alt S we can scale these points individually and here as well and maybe tiny little bit here as well. Okay, so this will be our mast and now let's create some sail. So let's tab out, let's press Shift A and let's add a plane. Now I will tap into the edit mode, press R then Y and rotate it 90 degrees. Let's hit enter. And now we'll go for a side view again by pressing 3 on an unpad and press G and move it here. And now let's select this vertex right here and press Ctrl X to dissolve it. Now select this vertex, press G, then Z and move it up. And now I'll press K for a knife tool and start cutting right here. And to snap the angle, I'll press A. 
click to confirm and enter to confirm the cut. And now we can press Ctrl R to create more cuts right here. Right click to release in place. And now Ctrl R again and create two cuts. And I'm modifying the number of cuts with the mouse wheel. Right click to release. And we'll need this geometry to bend the sail a little bit. Okay, so that should be enough. Now tab out and probably there'll be some more details that you can do later, but let's keep focused on the purpose of this tutorial. So we can now refine our model. First, let's select the mast and I forgot to fill caps here. Um, that way this is closed and right click and shade smooth. Let's select the sail again, tap into the edit mode and we can select these two vertices and let's press O or you can click here for the proportional editing. Let's press G then X and move it to the side and we can increase the fall off with the mouse wheel. And you can go really large like this. Don't worry about offsetting the sail a little bit. Um, we can fix that later. So let's do something like this. So we have a nice curvature there. Now we can press A to select all, press G then X and move it back. So it fits the mast a little bit better. And of course, we need to fix this point as well. So press G then X, move it back and we can reduce this fall off. And this should work nicely with our sail. Now let's select the boat, tap into the edit mode. And I want to chop this up into multiple parts because I want to create like planks. So let's go for face select or press three, select this face right there and press P and enter to separate it into a new object. Now alt click this loop right here and do the same, press P and enter to separate it. And now let's create a new cut right here. So press Ctrl R and create a cut, right click to release. And again, make sure you're in the face select, alt click this loop and press P to separate. So we have multiple objects now and we can chop them up a little bit. So it looks like this boat is made from planks. So let's tab out and select this top ring. Now tap into the edit mode, go into the edge select mode. So press two or click here, select this edge right there and maybe this one here. And we can press V to, you know, rip this apart, right click to release. And one more thing, let's disable clipping here. Select this front edge, make sure you disable the proportional editing and press G then X and move it slightly to the side. We want to keep this one connected, but this I want it disconnected. Let's enable clipping back again. Now press A to select all and Alt E and extrude faces along normals. And let's extrude this outside just like that. And you can see these little gaps here. And that's what I was going for. And now let's select this edge right there. Press G twice to slide it and hold Alt so we can slide it outside as well like this. And don't worry about these imperfections because that's what we are aiming for here. And now tab out, select this object right here, tap into the edit mode and we can separate this as well. So select this edge here, this one and here. And again, we'll press V to rip this apart. And now press A to select all and Alt E, extrude faces along normals. And let's extrude some planks here as well. And let's do the same here. We don't need to separate that. So let's just press Alt E and extrude faces along normals. Okay, now we can select the bottom face. Um, it really won't be visible, so it's not necessary. So maybe we can just leave it like this. So let's now select the top one here and we'll add a bubble modifier and let's increase the number of segments like that. And in the bubble modifier, let's expand the shading section and enable hardened normals. You will get a warning, but don't worry about that right now. And let's now select these other two by holding shift with the top one as last. And now just click here and copy to select it. That will transfer the bevel modifier to these other objects. And now with all of them selected with the top one as active, we can right click shade smooth. And additionally, to get rid of that warning and make it work, we can go to the object data properties normal section. And by holding alt, we can apply this option to all objects. So click auto smooth by holding alt. And by holding alt, we can slide this up all the way to 180 degrees. And now this is shaded correctly. And we now have some nice planks um, going around our boat. And this is basically finished model. Now let me just select the sail, right click and shade smooth. And this is what I'll be working with. Now let's select the sail and hold shift and select the mast. Press control P and parent to object. 
and now let's select all of these and shift click the top ring and press ctrl p and parent to object so now everything is parented here and we can easily manipulate the boat and we can now select the sail press r then z and rotate it a little bit and press g then y to move it along and one more thing here i want a little bench or something so let's press shift a and let's add a plane now tab in scale it down like this and press s then x to scale it on x axis just like that press g then z and move it up and we can of course move it back a little bit tab into the edit mode and press e to extrude and we can also add some bevel modifier here as well with some more segments reduce the amount a little bit enable that harden normal shading and in the normal section enable auto smooth and we have some bench and now i will parent that to the rest of the boat as well now we'll create some water so let's press shift a and let's add a plane now i will tap in press s and four scale this four times that should be enough um, this will be just a cutout you know for diorama purposes um, you can of course make larger body of water whatever whatever fits your goals uh, with this design so right click and subdivide this few times like three that should be enough maybe one more and now with the edge select mode active i will alt click the sides and by holding shift add to the selection press e then z to extrude this down and additionally f to fill at the bottom don't worry about the end guns right now um, but just in case we messed up the normals let's press a to select all and shift n to recalculate the normals and now let's go for a face select select this face on the top and by holding ctrl and shift we can click here to make the selection and now in the vertex group we'll click the plus icon and assign to a new group this is something we'll be using for the displacement so now tab out so now let's go to the modifiers tab and let's add that displacement and first of all let's limit that to only the new group and direction z now let's click new for the texture and here we can go to the texture setup and switch this to clouds texture and we can increase the size to create some displacement here and you know play with the strength so something like this now to make this body of water nice and smooth um, we can add some more modifiers so first of all let's add the bevel modifier and let's add one more segment here and i want to move this above the displacement so it comes first and then i want to add subdivision modifier here as well and move that above the displacement as well let's make these two levels in the viewport right click and shade smooth so we have something like this here and now we can play with the displacement we can play with the strength you know and of course we can play with the scale and i want to make this a little bit larger i want larger waves but you can see the max size is two um, but don't worry about that we can press shift a and let's add the empty let's press g then y move it aside a little bit and now in the displacement menu we can replace the coordinates with object coordinates and pick our new empty so this way it's easy not only to move our displacement texture but to scale it so press s and scale it up and now you can go back to the displacement setup and play with the strength and you have nice larger waves but we have a slight issue here because you can see the water goes inside the boat um, and that's not optimal and that's why I saved the original shape in the backup so let's activate it right now and let's rename this to cutout and we can tab in and fill the top part so if you press slash on a numbat you can isolate this alt click the top loop and press F to fill and again I'll press A and shift N to recalculate normals tab out and press slash on a numpad again to exit isolation mode and we can now shift click this water object and press ctrl minus to use the bool tool if you don't have it activated go again into the edit preferences add-ons search for bool tool add-on and activate it um, if you're not sure what add-ons i'm using and you want to see more just recently i released the video talking about my blender setup and add-ons i use so go ahead and check that one out i will link it in the description for you and now i'll press ctrl minus to create a subtraction boolean operation 
And now, of course, this object is invisible here. It won't be visible in renders, but it helps us with our Boolean cutout. And of course, we can scale it up a little bit because we extrude these planks. And now you can see um, it creates this cutout in the middle for us. And I will shift click the boat and press Ctrl P to parent that Boolean object here because when you move the boat, it will move with you. And now if you move the boat down, you can see you have that cutout there and there's no water inside. So that's precisely what we want. And basically this is all finished in terms of modeling. So let me hold Shift S and reset cursor to World Origin. I will add yet another object here, um, yet another plane. Now let's look from the top by pressing seven on the numpad, tab in and press S to scale this up tiny bit larger than water. And now let's look from the front, press G then Z and move it down like this and extrude and again press a and shift n so we don't mess up with the normals now tab out and let's press shift a and let's add a plane that will be our backdrop or background if you will let's look from the front and to be precise we can switch this to vertex snapping press g then z and move it down and by holding control we can snap it here like this and now just press s to scale it up and i will use my isocam add-on here um, if you don't have it, look in the description, you will find the link and the guide to download and install. And now I will use the true ISOCAM option and set it up a little bit. So in the camera settings, I will increase this to 16 orthographic scale. That's the only way you can zoom the orthographic camera and switch the resolution in the output tab to something like 1600 to 1200. And basically now just play with the scale of the boat and the position. Okay, and now for the little animation, um, there's not much to do here. I just want to create a little bit of a wiggle. So let's set this to 120 frames and in the output tab, let's set this to 30 frames per second. Now select this empty object and press I and insert location. Now scrub to frame 60, press G then Y, move it a little bit like this and press I and insert location again. And now we can select this first keyframe, press Shift D and duplicate it all over to the end of our animation. And now we have this little, you know, back and forth loop um, that should be enough for a short four second loop like this. And now with the boat, um, we can, you know, add some subtle movements there as well. So select the boat, go to the frame one and press I and insert the rotation. Now I will expand this timeline part and by pressing control tab, we can switch to the graph editor and now let's select the Z rotation and press X. We don't need that. I will be rotating only on X and Y. So let's select the Y rotation. I'll press N to show the side panel in the graph editor. And now let's go to the modifiers, add modifier and we'll add some noise. And now for the scale, I want to go something like 20 and strength something really subtle like 0.1. And now we'll restrict the frame rate so we can loop nicely. And I want to go from 1 to 120 and blend in, blend out about 20 frames. So now we have something like this. The boat is wiggling from side to side. And to make this even more interesting, we can do the same thing on the X. So again, we'll add noise, scale 20 and something really subtle like 0.1. And again, we'll need to restrict that frame range and some blending. So we have now some wiggle and some water movement and really it's just a cute little, you know, boat animation that we have going on here. Um, but there's always something more you can do, you know, some details, some secondary movement. And I think this sail is a little bit rigid, so we can add some movement to that as well. And now we can go to the object data properties and you can see the shape keys. So let's click the plus icon and that will give us the basis shape key. So that's the basic one. And if you want to use this feature, you will need to click this once again. So you actually have some other key there. Now you can tap into the edit mode. You can see it active here and let's just select one of these edges. Let's activate the proportional editing and let's press G then X twice and we can reduce this fall off, you know, to move the sail slightly inwards like this and now press a and g x twice to move it back just like that okay so now if you modify this value here you can see you are switching between the states um, of this object and you can of course keyframe this so let's just go to the frame one 
and you can press I hovering over this value. You can see the keyframe there. And actually let's go something like 0.5 here and press I again. So I want to start somewhere in the middle of this state. And now let's add the noise modifier here as well. And this will be very similar setup. So let's enter scale of 20, for example, and let's see what this does. You can see the sail is moving a little bit and that's exactly what we want. If you want it more like pronounced and erratic, you can go to something like two and you will see some, you know, larger movement. Um, but I think I liked something like 1.5 and let's restrict the frame range here as well so we can clamp it for our 120 frames and basically this is our animation now the rest will be only about some render setup so let's go to the render properties and we'll enable screen space reflections and refraction but this is only for the preview purposes so it works in ev and we can of course enable ambient occlusion but we are interested in cycles render so i will switch it here go for GPU, enable some denoising and reduce the tile of the render to 512 and the sampling of the animation to something like 64 so it doesn't take ages um, to render. And now I'll press Ctrl B and limit our rendering to our viewport and now we can just preview the rendered boat. And this is too dark because we have no lights in our scene. So let's go to the material preview and of course we can enable scene lights and scene world here as well. And let's press shift A and let's add the first light and that will be sunlight. I'll press G then Z, move it up and hold period on the keyboard to switch to 3D cursor. You can do that here as well. And now let's press R then X and 30 degrees and R Z minus 45. So it shines from the side like this. And now in the light setup, I will increase the strength to something like three. And now let's press shift A and let's add some ambience. So I will add area light, press G then Z, move it up. Now I'll switch from square to disc and increase the size a little bit. Now press R, X, 45 minus and R, X, 45. So we have that light positioned um, like this. And now we can increase the power to something like 1500. So it's really strong and play with the color a little bit. So it's like a sunset light and maybe add some warm tone um, to the sunlight as well. And now for the colors, let's select the background. Let's create a new material. And I want this like a blue or aquamarine or something. Now this will be kind of a sand. That's what I meant when adding it. So the water has actually some backdrop under. So let's create some sand color like this, maybe a little bit brighter. And now let's select the water and let's create a new material. And apart from enabling that refraction in the EV settings, if you want to see the refraction in the EV, you need to go to the viewport display and enable screen space reflection for that particular shader as well. And now let's increase the transmission. And I want to increase the value here all the way and give this a little bit of a blue color like this and reduce the roughness to something like 0.1. So this will be our water shader. Doesn't look like much here, but when you switch to rendered in cycles, this will get much better. Of course, this might look a little bit too dull, depends on your displacement. So you can always go back to the texture and you know play with the displacement size. So you have some more interesting waves here. And then of course you can play with the position of your lights. So if you, for example, select this area light and move it around, you can find the reflections you really like. And now let's select the boat and let's add a new material there as well. This will be some kind of a, like a wooden material um, for the planks and we can increase roughness there. And let's add the same material for these other planks as well. And you know what? I think it will be nice to have different material here on top. So let's duplicate this material and change the color to something like blue. So it looks painted and we'll set the same wooden material for the mast and create just the white material for the sail. So this is what I had in mind. Basically, um, you can always play, you know, with the position of these lights and their color. And what I like to do is to create additional light for the backdrop. So if you go for a top view, you, you can press shift D to duplicate this light, move it aside a little bit and then down. 
so you have some shine on your background and you can add it some color and I don't like the roughness on this so I'll increase the roughness on the background as well and now to make it blend a little bit better let's go to the world settings and let's actually add some color to the world light and increase the lightness or the value if you will and let's create something like this okay so this will be our little wiggly boat here you can see it moving um, all around and in the EV it should be more pronounced if it's too slow you can see I have 7 FPS here uh, what you can do I will press control tab to switch back to the timeline here you can choose frame dropping in the playback so actually it will play um, in the real speed dropping frames and if you want better preview um, most of the issue here is the subdivision so you can disable it in the viewport leave it on leave it on for the render so now you have much more smooth animation without any frame issues and you can preview what you have here and then the only thing left is to go to output and you know choose some folder you want your animation rendered in switch to ffmpeg and in the encoding you can choose mp4 container press ctrl f12 or go here and render animation if you don't like the overall color settings here, you can always go to the render settings, color management, you know, and play with the contrast settings and, you know, some exposure. So that's it for today's little boat modeling and animation session. I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave that like, it will really help me. And again, if you're new and you want to see more, please hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.